And as the song says, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. We are here, Father, knowing that prayer is essential beyond reason for us to exist. I pray that, Father, that you breathe a fresh breath on us, that of your Holy Spirit, so that we can truly abide in you through your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Have your seats, please. You know, I entitled this message, I've entitled this message, you know, how do you know that? the right time, the best time to, to get pregnant. Is there a good time or is there a bad time to get pregnant? You are with me? Is there a best time and a worst time to get pregnant? So we go to Exodus chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Remember I'm reading from the New Living Translation, the NLT. And it says, now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and her attendants were walking along the riverbank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slaves to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Verse 7. Then the sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse it for me and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. <coughs> now, Moses was born at a time, a very serious time. He was born at a time when the king, when the pharaoh of Egypt had already given the command that all children are supposed to be executed who are children of the Hebrew. He born at a time when the Hebrew people were under bondage and were suffering. I mean, what a time to be born. To be born when your mother is a slave, your father is a slave, your siblings are slaves, your uncles and aunts and cousins are slaves, everybody's a slave. To, to enter into earth at a time when you're going to be a slave. What a time to be born. But it's not just only to be born a slave. Based on the most recent command, it was the wrong time to have a child because at that time, any child who was to be born was supposed to be murdered. So just when your time would have come, for you to enter into this world to make your mark to be something great, you have to enter into a world of a slave system. And the first day you are born, you are supposed to be taken out. What a time to be born. And so, Amram, his father, and Jochebed, his mother, I mean, they would have had to give some thought into this thing. 
Is this the best time to have a child? You're having a child when every circumstance around you says that you shouldn't. Somebody help me. You're having a child where your life says at this time you shouldn't. I wonder if you're still with me. Everything about your life says that you shouldn't. The thing about it is, they went ahead and had this child. It's not that they didn't have two other children before. So, they could hold on to the two that they have and probably understand that this one can't come. Stay with me. They decided to have this child and disobey the command of the king. The Bible says that they kept this child for three months. Now, I mean, I, I believe that is the most trying period of a child. They cried for a lot of things, they cried for everything at that, that time. But verse 3 says, but when she could no longer, when she could hide him no longer, she decided to put him in a basket. When she could do what? Hide him no longer. What, what does that mean? You have to appreciate back then. If, if, if one person in a family were to disregard an edict, disregard a command, it had wide-reaching repercussions. It didn't just only stay with the person who would have committed the act, the crime, the misdemeanor. It would have extended to their family, as the Bible said, and it would make your family a dunghill. So that even when um, Haman had planned to kill Mordecai and all these things swing back at him, King Harasaras decided that I'm going to not just kill Haman, but his entire family. Even when Achan and they had sinned in the camp with Moses, you all stay with me. God destroyed the entire family and not just Achan alone. Are you with me? And so here it is. If 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 Jockey Bear, Jockey Bear was putting the entire family at risk for one baby. So when she could no longer put everybody at risk. She still decided through the Holy Spirit, somebody help me, through the Holy Spirit to bring, to, to bring some kind of um, way of escape for that child by putting it in a basket. And I am saying to you, the Holy Spirit has a way of keeping everything in concert, well coordinated, so that at the end you have a, a unison in, 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 in um, crescendo. When it really happens, I mean, it sounds like a wonderful symphony. It all comes together. Amen. Nothing is going before its time or after its time. When it meets, it meets at the right time when it should happen. <clears throat> so he was able to say to Pharaoh's daughter, out of all days, I want you to go to the river today. And I want you to go to the river at this time of day. I want to coordinate it at the same time I am having Jockey Bear make the basket. She ought not to finish making the basket way after you leave. Somebody help me. The, the, the basket, so I am the Holy Spirit. It's coordinating what is going on in Jockey Bear's house. At the same time, he's he, he is also coordinating what is going on in, in Pharaoh's daughter's house with Pharaoh. And he's also putting also nature together to ensure that the right current. Was the, okay, the right current of the river will make sure that that basket reach at the right time. And he also 
steered the basket so that they didn't get caught up in any ticket along the side of the river bank because it went and navigated itself off and so when it really was released they had already gone no he ensured that this basket was going at the right direction at the right speed for her and then when it reached at the right place he told her pharaoh's daughter turn your head into that direction somebody else. it was <coughs> It was not. Listen to what it says. Listen to what it says. In verse 5, Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river. The Bible says, the Bible did not say it's her attendants saw Moses. It said, she saw the basket among the reeds, and what? Sent her female slaves to get it. You talk about coordination? You talk about coordination? And now, here it is that they are able to receive this baby. But God also coordinated and had Miriam, Moses' big sister, to also walk alongside and accompany the basket. You know what blew my mind? It blew my mind how a young girl could give such a diplomatic answer at the spur of the moment. Because let me tell you something. There is no way that Jockey Man knew that in sending this basket, it was going to meet with Pharaoh's daughter and find favor. If it's anything, somebody help me. If it's anything, because the command came from Pharaoh's house to kill every baby, you don't want your baby to meet with Pharaoh's daughter. That is the last person you want your baby to meet with, because it's from that house the command came to kill all the babies. So it was just about listening to the Holy Spirit to put the baby in the basket and send the baby, not knowing what will become of the baby. All the Spirit was able to tell Jockey Man is to put the baby in the basket. No, but you're not going to make it. You see, the Holy Spirit does not have to reveal to us the whole plan. The Holy Spirit doesn't have to tell us this will be the end if you do this. And, and because you see, many of us, we only waiting to hear how good it will end, and then we will decide to get involved. But Jesus says, no. You have to have faith in me that if I tell you to take this step without you seeing any evidence, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You are not supposed to see the evidence before you can make a move. If God tells you step, you just start stepping. And so she just stepped out by faith to put the baby in the basket and hopefully something will happen not knowing to her. But I'm hoping something good come out of it in terms of my child. And as soon as the Pharaoh's daughter saw this beautiful baby crying, Miriam came just in time to say it to Pharaoh's daughter. That's as much she says. That's as much she says. Verse 7. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? <clears throat> she didn't say, shall I go and get my mother? Because at the end of the day, if that Pharaoh daughter did not find favor with that baby, just saw the baby, investigate, saw, and you come and say, shall I get the mother? It's like, how come this mother, this baby could reach three months old when a command was given as soon as the baby born? You're supposed to kill that baby. It meant, therefore, that the mother of this baby violated the command. <coughs> Excuse me when you cough tonight. And she should be executed. She should be what? So, 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 so the daughter said, Shall I go and get one, one of the Hebrew woman to nurse her? How could she at that point say such a thing unless it's the Holy Spirit putting on her mouth the right thing to say? And I want us to note 
That is the kind of work we want to have with Jesus. That at the moment, we must be able to get the words coming out that the Holy Spirit has directed. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, I want, to, I want to say also, you all say with me, we're going somewhere with this. Here it is now. Miriam asks, should I get one of the Hebrew? And then, having said that, Pharaoh's daughter agreed. In verse 8, she says, yes, go. She answered. So the girl went and brought her one. The girl didn't go and get a Hebrew woman. She got the Hebrew woman that was Moses. And when the mother came, Pharaoh's daughter said, go ahead and nurse this child for me, and I will pay you for it. Somebody else. You know, we say everything is double double. I mean, it is, it, it is in the first instance, you, you get to keep your baby. While everybody else's baby may have been perishing here or there, as the case may be, you get to keep yours. So, I mean, you, you, that, that is enough blessing. You don't need any more blessing more than the spared life of your child. But on top of that, you get Pharaoh's house, who give the order. To slaughter babies, you get from that house saying, I will pay you to keep your baby. <laughs> Come on with me. You see how God does things. Now God is saying, I'm going to give you double the reward for listening to me. He's going to give you double the reward. So in as much as you have the preservation of the life of your son, I want to also take from Pharaoh's treasury money to maintain your, ba your baby. And let me tell you something. I have of the firm conviction that they didn't ration what they sent for Moses. When they were sending boxes of groceries and stuff like that, and the money to take care of them, it was well enough to take care of the entire family. Wow. Wow. And then she had sufficient time to train this tribe in the Lord. So by the time Moses went into Pharaoh's house to live, he already knew who he was. He already knew who he was. So yes, let's see how we could bring this in at this time. Let's see how we could bring it in. What this is saying to us, one, Most times, God wants to deliver us or to give us a deliverer. It is when the circumstances of our lives are so dire. Help me. When everything looks like it shouldn't happen and is going against us, that is the kind of environment God has a way of, of creating for the best to happen to all of us. So that when, 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 when Joseph found himself with um, uh, his most painful experience to be rooted from his family, to become a slave, to go down in Egypt, to live such a hard life, what they did not, what they did not know is that under those circumstances, when famine came and when life was hard, that was the time God was preparing for a deliverer. So he became the second in command in Egypt. Are you with me? And, and we could give countless and countless after examples. But I also want to share with you that the Bible says when the fullness of time would have come, when Israel was at their worst and going through their oppression from the Roman Empire and everything was going against them, that is the time that Jesus turned up. I want you to know the right circumstances for the greatest things to happen to us is not when you see things been going really good for you. When things been going really good for you and something is about to happen, something all right would happen. But I don't want something all right. I want something extraordinary. 
I want something that is out of this world, that is really explosive, something that could really blow my mind. And I'm saying those moments really count. When? God allow all those stresses of life to come against you. And it's in those moments, leadership is born, a leader is born, victory is had, deliverance is there. It's at that moment, the greatest and the best of us comes out. And so the question is, was it the right time to have that baby? Was it the best time to have that baby under the worst circumstances? God allowed that baby to be the deliverer, not just only of the family of Amram and, and Jochebed, but all of Israel. But all of Israel. So I'm saying to those of you who are listening online, like in this evening. You may just be having a deliverer at the right time. I want us to pray. I try to support the behind this time as we pray. Found about there may be somebody who is wondering if this is the right time that you're doing what you're doing with them. Somebody may be wondering. Everything seems to be going bad around them, so it's not the right conditions for them to get ahead with what they're seeking to get ahead with. But Father, those are some of the best and the most right opportunities at the right time. It's about rising out of the ashes. You have a way of doing these kinds of things with us. Help us to remain so in tune with the Spirit that even when the storm is blowing at every angle at us, help us to know that once we remain anchored in you, that is the time, dear Father, we start to soar. That is the time we start to float. That is the time we are above the waters. That is the time we start to excel. That is the time, dear Father, that you're going to be doing something great, something memorable for all of us. Let us remain abiding in you. And we give you thanks. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.